welcome back friends to the second part of video presentation on RNA processing here we will see the different types of splicing mechanisms to remove various types of introns and before that please uh, note that all these three RNA processing mechanisms are usually happening inside the nucleus itself that means in a eukaryotic cell the transcription occurs in the nucleus as we know that and after the synthesis of RNA molecule there will be 5 prime capping first followed by polyadenylation and splicing mechanism and only the processed RNA will be transported out to the cytoplasm and these RNA will be ready for the next level of functioning okay so here we will see the different uh, mechanisms to remove the endrons from the mRNA molecule right here you can look at uh, the different types of introns and the associated splicing and their features there are group 1 group 2 group 3 and group 4 introns so uh, these group 1 and uh, group 3 introns could be seen in even usually in the uh, mRNAs the other two like uh, group 4 is commonly found in tRNAs uh, whereas the group 2 is common in other forms like in mitochondria, chloroplast mRNA and uh, uh, other, other forms like fungus and algae. Right. So <clears throat> for each of these group of introns, each of, each, these, uh, each of these introns will be having slight differences in their features. Right. So there are different splicing mechanisms also exist for each of these intron groups. For the group 1 and group 2, they will be performing a self-splicing mechanism without utilization of energy. And whereas uh, the other two like uh, group 3 and group 4 require energy for their splicing process. And the group 3 is the most commonly seen uh, splicing process or the group 3 is the most commonly seen intron in the mRNAs of most of the eukaryotic cells and the splicing mechanism is called splicy is a spliceosome mediated mechanism and this involves a number of ribonuclear proteins called SNRPs or SNRNPs and they require energy also and the fourth group is an endonuclease mediated one where there, are, there is an endonuclease enzyme which is splicing the exon introns out and there will be ligase enzyme which joins the exons together. So in this presentation we will see the three mechanisms that mean group 1, group 2 and group 3 mechanisms in detail. So this is in short uh, what the splicing is. You can see the intron 1 and intron 2 which are spliced out by the splicing machineries and the exon 1, 2 and 3 will be joined together to get the complete RNA molecule. And now the mechanism of the group 1 intron splicing. You can see the yellow marked one is the uh, intron and you can, you can see certain specific bases at the 5 prime and 3 prime end of the intron. Here it is an adenine residue at the 5 prime end and a guanine residue at the 3 prime end of the intron. And in the splicing mechanism, we can see there is an external guanine residue involved in the splicing of group 1 introns. So the 3 prime OH group of this guanine will act as a nucleophile and that will attack the phosphate group at the 5 prime end of the intron right and as we see in the picture there is a cutting at the 5 prime end because of the nucleophilic attack of the guanine residue and this reaction will be followed by a second round of nucleophilic attack as we know once the 5 prime end is cut the intron is 
spliced at the 5 prime end the 3 prime end of the exon is free that means there will be a free 3 prime OH and this OH again can act as a nucleophile and that will but attack at the 3 prime end of the intro that results in the removal of the indrone from the mRNA molecule and also that causes the rejoining of the two exons together. So this is the overall mechanism of group 1 introns. And this is the reaction how this, uh, this nucleophilic attack occurs. It's a, it's a kind of trans esterification reaction. You can see the uh, OH group of the guanosine residue with the free electrons which attacks the phosphate group of the uh, intron and there will be shifting of electrons and ultimately that is cleavage. And now the second group, here also uh, this is a self splicing mechanism and here the differences are there is no external guanine or like any molecule but instead an internal nucleotide will act as a nucleophile. Actually, an adenine residue within the indrone itself act as a nucleophile. Actually, the, uh, the two prime hydroxyl group will act as the nucleophile. And as a result, the mechanism is almost the same as that in the class 1. As a result of the uh, phi prime splicing or the phi, phi prime cleavage mediated by the intermediate adenine's hydroxyl group there will be an intermediate structure formation called a lariate structure and this lariate will be spliced out by the second nucleophilic reaction and rejoining of the exons will follow. So this is the second mechanism for the removal of introns of group 2. And the third is the largest class of intron and they are usually spliced by a spliceosomal mechanism or it's a spliceosome mediated process. And what are the spliceosomes? Actually these include RNA and proteins. The RNA molecules are small nuclear RNA molecules called SNRNAs. Right. And there are certain proteins also and collectively we call them as small nuclear ribonucleoproteins or SNRNPs or we usually pronounce it as SNRPs. And in the splicing mechanism there are different types of SNRPs involved like U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. These are the different SNRNPs involved in the splicing process. And other features of the group 3 indron splicing are there will be a dinucleotide sequence usually located each at the 5 prime and 3 prime ends. There is a GU sequence at the 5 prime end and an AG sequence at the 3 prime end. And these sequences are important that they will mark the cleavage site. And as already stated this is an energy consuming process and uh, usually uh, after splicing the introns will, will be cleaved within the nucleus. Now the mechanism. See the U1 as already said this is a complex of RNA and protein. So the RNA within the U1 has certain sequences which is complementary to the 5 prime cleavage site of the intron. So the U1 will bind into that site which usually covers the GU sequence at the 5 prime splice site of the intron. And the U2 comes next. The U2 with the, with the, with the complementary sequence for an internal sequence of the intron. And this sequence will cover an adenine residue which is uh, going to act as a nucleophile as we have seen in the group 2 mechanism. So there will be an interaction. There will be a complementary pairing of U2 with that internal sequence as you can clearly see in the image. So the U2 is also attached at that particular position. Remember that this is not at the 3 prime splice site but at an internal site. So now U1 is bound at the 
phi prime splice site of the intron and u2 is at the a sequence internal to the intron where we have a specific adenine residue which is going to act as a nucleophile right now the remaining snrnps are coming to roll the u4 u6 will come as a complex <coughs> and the u5 also will will uh, help in the assembly now this is an inactive complex and they they'll form a loop like structure because of the involvement of all these snrnps and the activation of this complex occurs uh, through certain rearrangement uh, which occurs internally and by the energy utilization of atp hydrolysis then there will be release of u1 and u4 from the complex and uh, the u6 will remain associated with the u5 and the 5 prime cleave site and also there will be u2 which is associated at the internal sequence and this uh, rearrangement causes the internal adenine residue to position close to the gu site at the 5 prime end of the intron and of course what next happens is a nucleophilic attack uh, occurs the oh group of the adenine residue that usually that will be the 2 prime oh group so this 2 prime oh group of the adenine residue will attack the guanine residue at the 5 prime cleavage site then that results in a lariate structure as already seen in the group 2 and this lariate will be released by the second nucleophilic attack and there will be rejoining of the exons so this comprises the mechanism of splicing by the spliceosome uh, process that means seen in the group 3 introns right so now uh, you can see in this slide a demonstration of a gene with different introns and exons and how the processing occurs you can see there, there is a multiple number of introns present which are shown in yellow color and uh, the green colored ones are the exons and you can see the fibrin capping and uh, also there will be polyadenylation and you can see there is a the initial uh, gene was having a sequence length of around 7700 base pairs and which will be uh, when it comes to the functional stage these are reduced into around 1872 base pairs so there is an extensive removal of non coding regions through the splicing mechanism right so uh, we will wind up here so in the previous video we have seen the polyadenylation and fibrin capping and here we have discussed the three mechanisms of splicing that means for group 1 and group 2 there is self splicing in the group 1 there is an external guanine residue coming into play and in the second one there is no external guanine but an internal adenine residue will act as a nucleophile and there is a lariate structure formation and in the group 3 external proteins are involved which are called snrnps and this snrnps will cause the splicing of the intron in group 3 and we are not talking about group 4 in detail but group 4 is a simple process in which there is an entonuclease which cleave the introns and these introns will be spliced out and after that a ligase enzyme will take the charge to join the exons together so i hope uh, the mechanism of splicing is clear so the splicing occurs uh, not only in the mRNA it's not limited to the mRNA but uh, also there is splicing process happening in the rRNA and uh, tRNA transcripts especially in case of tRNA there uh, there are some some more mechanisms additional to the splicing like you can see there are some base modification some additions and deletions uh, not only in tRNA in some other other even in in the mRNA you can see these kind of specialized processing mechanisms uh, this is not uh, we will not be discussing that additional uh, mechanisms here in this video but later we will do that so uh, all those together 
uh, a functional RNA molecule will be produced. Right. So hope you uh, have an idea about RNA processing mechanisms altogether. Thank you for watching.